welcome back to my channel and welcome to vlogmas day three i am just off to get my hair cut now so if you're wondering why it looks a bit questionable that is why but more importantly we have a christmas tree now my mum kindly picked this one up for me at the weekend and i did decorate it i filmed the whole process um but i'm just so glad to have one and not have the cheese plant standing in as a substitute because it just wasn't the same so i will insert the footage of me decorating the tree now also, the star on top is on such a wonk. I think I need to get a bigger one because the tree I had before this was so tiny and it did actually fit. And as you can see, it is very wonky, so I do need to sort that out. So here's the tree. I can't even tell you the difficulty I went through <laughs> trying to find lights for this tree. I kept getting the wrong amount and this is the third set of lights we've got so I'm just going to stick with these ones because I can't bother to go back to the store and if you're wondering why it looks a bit underwhelming that's because the tree I had before this was like a third of the size so obviously I only have the amount of baubles to fit that kind of tree. This is my first proper tree as an adult, so I do need to go this weekend and get some more decorations for it, so maybe I'll show you that in another vlog, but this is the tree for now, and it's definitely an upgrade from just having all the presents scattered around my cheese plant. Hello, I am back with significantly less hair than when you last saw me. Um, it is raining super loud outside, I don't know if you can hear that right now, but if you can, I apologise. But I'm here with Orbit because I wanted to quickly talk about her, and she doesn't get featured in as many videos as I would like. I know not all of you are interested in leopard geckos or in reptiles in general, but she is a big part of my life, and I love her a lot. So if you want to see more videos about her, I will happily oblige because I'm obsessed with her, and I want her to feature in more videos too. So I have had Orbit now for coming up on being a year, I think it will be a year in about January, February time and I, when I got her I obviously did my research but I wanted to play it pretty safe. I did all my research and I wanted to go with what the majority of my research said and one of the things that was in my research was to use a heat map so I went with that and I've been using a heat map for the entire year that I've had her and it's been working fine but I've been using heat mats and oh my god the rain is so loud. Um, I'm distracted now, but I've been using heat mats and I've gone through two heat mats this year which I wasn't expecting to have to do, um, so I started thinking about other options. So one of my friends on YouTube, Leopard Gecko, she makes really good informative videos about Leopard Gecko care and she uses deep heat projectors with her Leopard Geckos and that was something that I was really interested in trying with Orbit too. So obviously there's nothing wrong with using a heat mat for your Leopard Geckos, people have been doing that for years but with any animal there's obviously new research and new technology that does come out and I wanted to give it a try because a lot of leopard gecko owners find that when they use a deep heat projector with the leopard gecko their activity levels increase and overall they seem to have a lot more energy and during the warmer months she is so funny she has the most incredible personality and obviously as it has started to get colder she is a bit more subdued and a bit more withdrawn and she's spending more time under her hot hide all day and I just want to see a bit more of that personality and obviously try to improve her life as well. So I'm not going to try to explain to you how a deep heat projector works because Rebecca's done a really good job of that on her channel and she understands the science behind it a lot better than I do. So I will leave her videos around deep heat projectors in the description. She's been a massive help when it comes to making the decision to make the switch over to using a deep heat projector and giving it a try. One of the things a lot of people are concerned about when using a deep heat projector is that the leopard gecko is not going to get the belly heat 
than it needs after eating its food, but if you're using tile or slate in your enclosure like I am, then the deep heat projector works by warming up that tile and it does provide them with that belly heat, so you don't need to worry about the leopard gecko not getting the belly heat that way because they still are able to with the deep heat projector. So obviously I'm going to give this a try, I know some people have various different opinions on whether it's good or not, but obviously worst case scenario we'll just go back to using the heat mat, I will still have that and I will be able to use that if I decide I don't like the deep heat projector or if I decide it's not working the best for her, I will just go back to using a heat mat so don't stress too much about that. But yeah, I thought I'd just let you know in a video that I am trying to improve her enclosure and I wanted to try a deep heat projector because if I randomly show her in a future video, you might be confused about what it is or why I'm suddenly using that. So I thought I'd give you a quick explanation in today's video. But I am going to pop her back and then I'll show you all of the things I bought to switch her over to a deep heat projector. So it got far too dark, far too quickly, so I've moved into my pet room, but this is all of the stuff I bought. Most of the stuff I did get from internetreptile.co.uk, I think, and I did make use of their Black Friday sales because this isn't the cheapest option for heating an enclosure. The heat mats are obviously a lot cheaper, but I'm hoping it makes it worth it in the long term because all of this stuff combined is a bit expensive. I think it cost me about £80 for all of this, but hopefully it's worth it. There we go. So this is what it looks like, this is the deep heat projector and then depending on what kind of enclosure you have you obviously need some sort of attachment thing. So I got a ceramic reflector clamp lamp and obviously because I have an exoterra I don't need to drill holes or go through the extent of trying to attach it to a vivarium. It's a lot easier having a mesh top on the enclosure so luckily I don't have to do any of that either. So I haven't actually opened this yet but I will do that in a minute and then also in here I did have to get a different thermostat now I do like to use the Habistat thermostat so that's the one I've got for my heat mat at the moment and that thermostat is a matte stat and this one is a dimming thermostat so I did have to buy another thermostat instead but I'm sure I can find a use for the other one in the future. So yeah this is what everything looks like I'm a bit annoyed because I ordered this from eBay and it did say it was new and it's got like dents on it I don't know if you can see and it also came with like weird tissue so I don't think that has not been used before I think this is used so that's annoying but I do need that so I'm just going to use it anyway. I can't actually do anything with it at the moment because I need to wait until my boyfriend gets home to lower her level on the rack to make room for the lamp to go above because right now the exit area is like right at the top of the rack if that makes sense so I need to wait for him to get home to lower it because I can't physically lift her exoterra by myself. But if you guys are interested in how I get along with this and you want me to give you an update in another vlog or in an actual video dedicated to this, please let me know and I will get around to doing that. I do appreciate that not all of you are interested in leopard geckos and reptiles, but she is a massive part of my life. She's a massive part of my family and I do really love her a lot and I just want to do the best for her. I know a lot of people will probably have opinions on this and don't worry, I will just try it out and see how it works. So many people have had some really good results with this, so worst case scenario, we will just go back to what we were doing before, but I want to always try to be up to date with the care and make sure she's getting the best care possible, so I wanted to spend the money and give this a go. Hello, Squinty. You have no idea how much money I just spent on you, do you? Nope, you don't care. So it's that time of day again where I sit and answer some of your questions and you guys have sent in some really good ones. So the first question is, what dream item do you wish you could afford to impulse buy right now? And I think if I did have the choice of anything and I did obviously have the money to buy something right now, I would probably get either a new camera or a new lens for this camera because let's be honest, it's not the best quality compared to some other YouTubers, but I just can't afford to spend that kind of money on something like that at the moment, but that's probably what I would impulse buy right now. The next question is, will your pets be getting any Christmas dinner slash treats? And I don't have any plans to get them any like specific Christmas treats, unless I make some, I might possibly do that if I have time, but they will be getting Christmas dinner, I think. So obviously last year I moved into this house like a week before Christmas. I did bring the rats with me. The mice did have to stay with my mum for about a week and I did pick them up at Christmas and I took the rats back with me for Christmas and we spent some time there. Um, obviously we had a Christmas dinner and the rats and the mice both got like a mini Christmas dinner with 
like turkey and vegetables. So I'm hoping this year I'm not taking them with me because I'm going to be back here in the evening that I'll bring them back some of the Christmas dinner so they can have some Christmas dinner as well. So this is a cute one, it says, how did you and your boyfriend meet? So if you didn't know, I don't live here by myself. I do have a boyfriend and we've been together for four years now and we did meet at university. So we met during the first week of university and he lived in one block of flats and I lived in another block of flats and I had a friend that lived in his flat and I just didn't like the flat I was living in. I didn't really get on that well with the people I was living with and also it was really hot so I couldn't sleep at night. So sometimes I would just go over and sleep on the sofa of their flat instead because it was a lot colder. And that obviously meant we were spending a lot of time together and we gradually ended up being best friends. So we were best friends for a while and apparently he liked me the first day he met me, which I actually liked someone else, sorry Lee. And it took me a while to actually realize that he liked me and then it took me even longer to realize that I actually liked him too. So after spending a good few months being best friends and me telling him the whole time how I liked someone else and talking to him about what I should do and the fact that he actually liked me that whole time, I gradually realised, you know, it's okay to like your best friend and it's kind of the ideal situation because we already got on so well and he already knew pretty much everything about me. There was nothing he didn't really know and so I gave it a shot and we've been together ever since. So the last question I think I'm going to answer today is what is your ideal place to live besides costs, moving, pets, etc? So if I didn't have to think about importing my pets into another country and I didn't have to think about the idea of leaving all of my family back in a country where I couldn't see them as often because realistically I don't think I would move abroad because I just couldn't cope with not seeing my family and seeing them like once a year, I would probably move to Canada. No offence to anyone that lives in America, but the idea of living there kind of scares me. I think I would prefer to live in Canada because I would like to have free healthcare still. But if we're talking strictly living in the UK, I think I would like to live by the sea. Obviously, the closer you get to the sea, it does get more expensive housewise. So that is probably never going to happen. But my dream living situation would be to live on a farm and have loads of animals. I think that's like every animal lover's dream. And that will probably never happen for me, but I hope that can happen one day. But that was it for today's video. I know it was a bit shorter than some of the other videos, but I do have so many more exciting videos planned for Vlogmas. Specifically, I have some in mind that I'm really excited to film, so you've got those to look forward to as well. As always, please make sure to subscribe if you want to see the rest of my Vlogmas and the rest of my other videos, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!